All right, you all. Are we ready? All right, we're ready here to this musical sound here. We are getting ready to tee off into another game. Huh? Humor. Scooby Dooby. I just said Scooby Dooby. Have mercy. Scooby Doo Night of Hundred Fright. It's coming up right now with Jaxler. Any percent run, and uh, let's get it going. Live? Okay. Good evening, everybody. It is almost midnight uh, where I live. Thank you all for dropping by. There's a lot of people here this late at night, so it's much appreciated. Welcome to Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. This is a 3D Metroidvania platformer hybrid combo wombo. Um, so before we get started, I'll just mention a couple of things first off. I am playing on the GameCube version of the game for faster loading times. And on top of that, uh, the first seven seconds, I'm going to be listening for an audio cue to skip a cutscene. Um, so just keep that in mind at the start. Uh, but yeah, this is a really sick, movement-heavy run. Um, so I know some of you all might have scratched your heads when you first saw this on the schedule, but I hope that you find this super interesting. Um, so I'm about ready to go. So time just starts on new game. Um, I'm just going to give John a moment here to fix the title, and then we should be ready to go. John, just let me know when you're ready to go. We fine? All right. I'm gonna assume that means it's time for me to go. So, yeah. I'm just gonna hit the option menu real quick because sometimes it loads into a demo. Okay, assuming we're ready to go, I'm gonna count off from three to go. So, three, two, one, go. Listening to an audio cue here. There we go. All right, and we're off into the races. So you're gonna start out by hearing a bunch of cha chomp cha chomps, and that is because there are a bunch of Scooby snacks throughout the game we gotta collect. Now, for whatever reason in this game, there are a bunch of these snack sort of toll booths that we have to get across in order to be able to get beat the game. Now we are gonna be skipping a lot of them, but there's a bunch of uh, very large uh, snack gates somewhere in the 850 uh, to like 850. I think is the last one of snacks that we have to get in order to progress through some areas. And so as a result, we're going to be having to grab several thousand Scooby snacks over the course of the run. That may sound overwhelming and a lot, but don't worry about it. We're going to be going into smaller side areas such as this level right here in order to be getting all the snacks that we need. Now the other thing you'll notice at the start here is that I'm doing this charge attack. Now normally at the start of the game this allows you to stun enemies, but we are going to be using it as our primary form of movement here. Now we'll talk a little bit about the specifics of how this attack works because it's actually kind of complicated. But I'm going to start by talking about a little bit of what we're doing here within the context of the game. So in order to start progression, we have to go save Holly, which hits a crucial story flag, and then we'll be out of the manor here. We did a kind of abuse of very lenient coyote frames there. You can't normally make that jump. But because the coyote frames are so lenient in this game, we can actually get those snack boxes early. We're also doing some scenery abuse right here. So there's a bunch of collision in this game, whether it's a wall or some like angled slope, where the game considers it enough of a ledge for you to get your double jump back. So as a result, we're going to be using that throughout the run um, to get a bunch of snacks and also do some sequence breaking. Um, all right, so this game's broken up into three wings. Uh, there's the manor that we were just in, there's a hedge maze and this area called Smuggler's Cove, and that's going to be our first destination here. And so, um, Shock on the Dock here is the first level that has a bunch of these sort of uh, cycles going on. Uh, some of them are platforms, and then some of them are enemies here. So I'm trying to go fast enough here in order to meet a specific enemy cycle a couple of turns over here. And if I hit this correctly, these flying fish enemies should be out of the way, so I can grab these snacks without risking taking a hit. On top of that, the faster that you get here, the better a position these rats are in. And that way, that just allows me to avoid jumping over them. So just a couple more jumps up here, and then a brief tour for a snack box. These bad boys are worth five snacks apiece, so that's going to really help on our snack routing for the speedrun. Alright, now Doc 2 has some interesting stuff here. 
So normally, uh, a pelican airdrops Shaggy into this level, and we're supposed to launch him up to that life preserver in order to um, be able to progress here and grab some Scooby Snacks. But I'm going to do a series of strats that are a little tight in order to skip him. So that's the first one. That looks really simple, but that one's a little precise. All right. And then I'm trying to get this snack box here. Okay, we'll take a second try. And then I'm going to boost off some boxes over here in order to get that last snack box. So normally you have to have Shaggy essentially uh, rubber band you up there, but I'm allergic to Shaggy, so I don't really care about him. Another box boost to grab this snack box. And then depending on how quickly you get here, uh, the hooks will be on a different cycle. So it's there's not really such a thing as a fast or slow cycle there. You just have to be ready for what you get there. So the reason that we're coming out here right now is to get our first power-up in the Metroidvania sequence. Now, in this game, they're all like a Mad Professor's inventions, and this one is a set of spring sprockets that will allow us to double jump. Uh, going into this level, though, I need to focus for one moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, uh, a little too late. So this uh, tar, it normally prevents you from running around and jumping until you get the upgrade from the first boss fight. But there's a two-frame window there where if I jump precisely, I can actually uh, move a little bit in the air. And that saves some of the slow tar movement. But not a huge deal. It's a tight window. All right, right here, we're going to get the double jump power-up and immediately start abusing this to jump on some scenery. Uh, we're going to go up here and grab some snack boxes that we normally can't get until after the first boss. And then we immediately death warp. So in this game, if you die, you'll get, immediately get sent to where you enter the level. So for there, uh, that allows us to just avoid some of that slow movement on the tar. Bounce off the crab to get a snack box, and then we will be on our way out of here. So the double jump is required to beat the game, um, but on top of that, we're also getting it so we can access the next wing of the game, which is the hedge maze. There we go. Now, um, in the hedge maze is a, a power-up called the helmet, which allows us our attack to actually deal damage to enemies, and that's really important for being able to beat the game in various areas here. Let's grab the key. Oh, that was close. All right, now, uh, the hedge maze levels all have a bunch of crazy cycle stuff going on here. Um, at the start here, I'm going to be focusing on trying to make sure that I get to the end of the level before a werewolf gets in my way. And now let me just grab an extra Scooby snack. It doesn't seem like much, but every snack that you miss over the course of the run will cause you to miss out on, uh, will cause you to have to get slower backup snacks in some of the later levels. And that can really add up over the course of the run. On top of that, you'll see me abuse the charge here a bit more. Essentially, um, the charge attack has a slower wind-up animation than your base run speed. But if you get it going, it saves a lot of time and movement. So careful planning for this particular charge attack is required to go optimally in this game. A lot of cool routing stuff involved with that. All right, I attempted to go for a cycle skip uh, called the Yeet Cycle. When you find a strat, you get the chance to name it, so I named it something really stupid. Um, only saves four seconds, though. There's a weird part of that wall you can slope boost off of, but not a huge deal. All right, so now in Hedge 2, you can normally just go to the end of the level here, but as you can see in the background, there's a ton of Scooby Snacks over there, and I forgot to eat before I started this run. So I'm going to do another slope boost off this tree in order to get up here. This is normally another section of the game where you're supposed to have that galoshes power up to walk on tar and up a slope. Um, but getting the snacks over here is super duper fast, so we're gonna go a little bit out of our way to get those Scooby Snacks. Hope you aren't being driven too crazy by the Scooby Snack sound, but... So another interesting property of this charge attack is that once you get it going, if you fall off a ledge with it, you can actually continue the charge. Now, like I said earlier, it's really important that you maximize the amount of uh, time the charge animation is happening in order to save the most time. So as a result, uh, using that technique can allow us to chain charges together in places we're not normally supposed to be able to. All right, right now, uh, we're gonna grab a couple of bonus snacks out in this direction, and then we'll be abusing another uh, death warp in order to get back to the beginning of the level. Uh, coming up is our first major sequence break of the run. So there's normally a one-way up exit up to the north um, where it um, lets you sort of backtrack casually. Uh, in order to get to these uh, school cliffs areas later. But if you hold a perfect 90 degree angle into that corner, you can actually just clip right through it. 
Now, this is actually kind of an interesting quirk of the routing. Uh, normally, what we're supposed to do to get the helmet is go through the rest of these hedge minis and sort of greenhouse levels. And that's fairly slow because there's a bit of a long auto scroller there involving a lawnmower. It's really tedious, and for a speedrun, that's obviously really slow. It turns out that the school cliffs area that we're going to next actually begins casually in the same level that the helmet upgrade exists in. So it turns out that uh, if we go through Skull Caves or Skull Cliffs backwards, we can actually just bypass the entire rest of the hedge maze, which ends up saving a couple of minutes. Now, Skull Cliffs 4 here, uh, we're going backwards, so I'm going to be rever uh, referring to the levels in reverse order here. Uh, there's a bit of a cycle I'm trying to meet here at the start. I have about one major movement flaw that I can afford before I'm at risk of missing it. Um, so a couple more charges here. This is where you really get to see the movement start to shine here is in these next sets of levels. Quick slope jump up here. Let's just grab some snacks. We're still waiting on that platform cycle, so it's fast to just come up here and grab some snacks while we're waiting. And we got here in time, so we saved about 15 seconds. And then I'm going to try to leave uh, this platform a little bit early. There we go. Now, um, it's really important, um, obviously because it's a speedrun, but it's really critical that I meet a certain cycle here at the end of the level. Uh, because we can do a kind of a platforming skip here to skip about the last 10% of the level. And the, be the better I do in getting there, the less likely I am uh, to get hit by a falling rock. Uh, that doesn't help me any, but not a huge deal. This, this cycle in the, in, in the level is rather lenient, so not too much to worry about. Might bonk our head, but not a huge deal. Oh, okay, the rocks were nice. So while we're waiting for that platform, we just grab a couple snacks, and then we jump down here, and that skips the rest of the level. So a lot of the platforming here looks a lot more difficult, or, or it looks a lot less difficult than it actually is, because obviously the game expects us to be coming from the other side of each of these levels, so the cameras are programmed in, in, in such a bias. So as a result, while these jumps aren't blind, you have to know where you're going, or else, because of the camera perspective, you're at a really high chance of dying. Just a couple more snacks here, then we're set to go. Not too much going on here on the rest of the screen, other than bonking off that crab. Now, in this level, they put an enemy right at the end here, so I have to angle Scooby up and to the left in order to avoid taking a hit here. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of these uh, broken down platforms are actually close enough to the main terrain where I can carry a charge forward and be able to avoid falling to my death. So that's a neat little strat here. This is mostly just movement, so I'm going to let it speak for itself. A little careful here. Okay, there we go. And now, moving on to the last level, or the first level of Skull Cliffs. We're going to be going for another cycle skip where I jump off the face of the wall in the background here. Looks good. Okay, there we go. So that looks really simple, and most of the time it is. However, sometimes if you hit the slope like a certain weird way, you'll just fall to your death and lose eight seconds. But glad I got to show that off here. And we are moving on into Haunted Hill 3 here. So this is actually looking really solid so far. I haven't made too many major movement mistakes. Um, so starting off here, I'm going to buffer a jump input so I can get a certain jump hitbox. I'll mention that later, but it just allows me to clip over that ledge a tiny bit faster. I jump right before the... Oh, that's not good. So I was attempting to go for a little bit of an enemy manipulation there, but not a huge deal. So one of the... Um... Okay, hold on a second. Backup strats. There we go. So you try to make a cycle there so you can bounce off the bat, but not a huge deal. If you go fast enough, you can actually run around that rock. A um, little bit of a tight cycle, but it's a marathon. Who cares? All, all good. All right, there we go. And at the top of this hill is the helmet upgrade. So we'll finally be able to deal damage to enemies. Now, I'm being very careful not to die here because, like I said, dying will put you back at where you enter the level. And it turns out, because of the entrance that we took, it'll put us right next to a warp gate, which will let us get to the next part of the run here. So super nice little routing thing here. And then, upcoming is the best uh, menu in the game. I love that menu. <laughs> Alright, so now we're supposed to go to the manor and defeat the first boss. Uh, but I don't really feel like doing that. So, I'm going to jump off that barrel and skip the first boss. <laughs> 
You're supposed to have the galoshes there uh, to be able to destroy those barrels. Uh, but you can just jump over them. Not a huge deal. Uh, so that skips about a third of the game. Not too big of a deal. You know, just a minor sequence break. Now this... Uh, set of levels here, fishy clues have some of the hardest movement in the whole run because of these conveyor belts. Now, after landing on a conveyor belt here for a couple of frames, uh, the game will obviously start to pull you in its direction. But if you jump early enough, um, you actually can resist some of the pull here. And as a result, you can use that to sort of manipulate your movement a bit better and avoid falling and make some certain cycles. So... As a result, um, you're going to be seeing me combine some really early hops as well as some later hops to influence my momentum to be able to survive here. That won't be super huge in this level because uh, this level is kind of a glorified auto scroller. I have to get four keys here in order to advance, and there's one platform cycle at the end that's like super duper lenient. So there's not too much uh, going on here. Um, so I don't have too much to talk about right now. So I realize I c talk kind of fast. So, if there's anything I missed, or if any of y'all in the chat have any questions about the run or the game, uh, feel free to go ahead and ask. I don't mind it at all. Thank you, thank you all for the compliments. I appreciate it. All right, so Fishy3 has a cool strat where we are going to skip about half the level. Uh, the invisible median over here between the level, you can stand on top of it, and that lets us just jump over and save about half the level's worth. Going to take a short detour, though, um, at the bottom of the floor here to grab some snacks, uh, just because there's a ton down here. Now, all this floor down here is uh, slippery, so it's kind of like um, Tokyo drifting down here, um, so I have to be a bit careful there. Uh, on top of that, uh, we're in Fishy 4 now, which has some of the coolest movement in this whole series of levels. I'm just going to let the levels do, its, do the commentary for me here. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to take a slight little detour down here for marathon safety, uh, just to make sure that I, I have enough snacks for later. Now right here's a really cool strat where I grab the three snacks and then have a really tight window to turn around the analog stick 180 degrees. And if I do that, I can land on the trampoline without having to double jump. What do I need the Scooby snacks for? There are various uh, snack toll booth gates placed throughout the game that will block my progress unless I feed it enough Scooby snacks. So you saw one right there at the end of the level. Um, I'm going to be needing uh, several thousand of these Scooby Snacks in order to finish the run, which sounds like a lot, but we're already through a fair portion of the game already, which might surprise you if you've played this game casually. So now, coming up after this level is probably one of the um, sickest and also most difficult parts of the entire speedrun, which are coasts for some ghosts. Now, uh, these levels, in addition to having some of the tightest cycles in the game, also have a bunch of really cool tech here. Now, Scooby has a couple of different hitboxes when jumping. There's like an upright hitbox and a more like long curved hitbox. And using those different hitboxes, I can sort of deform Scooby's model and be able to um, grab snacks I'm not supposed to be able to. So for example, I'm using a bunch of long jumps here where Scooby's like super tall in order to be able to grab a bunch of those snacks early. All right, not a huge deal. I went for a cutscene skip there, uh, but I bonked my head on the ceiling. That saves it like maybe 10 seconds or so, but eh, it's whatever. This run is like really, really good so far. So you're not supposed to be up here for a long time. Uh, you get an upgrade called the plungers to walk up a slope that will actually be going down later. Um, but there's a mother load of snacks and I can't think of a category that doesn't come up here for them. Oh, out of my way, Mr. Krabs. Thank you. All right, now um, there's a fishy lady over here that's guarding a bunch of boxes with keys in them. Uh, so what I have to do here is abuse Scooby's charge hitbox. Now one of the interesting properties of this attack is that Scooby's hitbox actually narrows when you execute the attack. So in a lot of places here, I should be taking damage from like enemies, especially coming up in the next level, but I'll be able to avoid it by abusing this narrower hitbox. So here's a great example. Uh, I'm just gonna focus here because there's a very tight cycle I'm trying to make. If I hit an enemy here, I have to take a slower cycle. All right, looks good. 
All right, nice. So if you're any slower there, that box behind me crushes me. So that was really sick. I'm glad I got to show that cycle off. Very, very tricky to learn. All right, so we're not done yet. Coast 3 also has some kind of tricky stuff going on here. So again, we're abusing sort of hitbox manipulation to be able to grab these snacks without enemies damaging us here. This just helps us to set up a cycle for a trick uh, coming up later here. So if you look in the background over there, there's all those Scooby Snacks out there. And that's a lot of them. And like I mentioned earlier, I forgot to eat before I started this run. So obviously I'm going to grab a, a, a bite to eat over there. What I'll do to do this is take intentional damage from that flying fish. And while Scooby is in iframes, he becomes Jesus for a couple of seconds. And we can use that property to walk across the water to these boats. Normally, we're supposed to have uh, the Super Smash power-up to be able to uh, create an entrance for us to get over here. But you can abuse becoming Jesus in order to be able to cross that distance. All right, and there we go. We are out of coast. So other than missing that cutscene skit, that's like the only major mistake in coast. That's a very, very difficult set of levels. So I'm happy that went as well as it did. All right, so don't mind me. I'm just going to bounce off some invisible collision that doesn't even have like a renderer or anything like that. We're not supposed to be up here for a couple of levels, but there's some nice Scooby Snacks here, so I'm stocking up. More hitbox manipulation here just to grab some of these snacks. Uh, generally speaking, these snacks are easiestly grabbed with a later power-up, um, but you can do some uh, precise platforming there to be able to gra grab them. All right, so coming up here to grab a snack box and a couple more snacks, and then we're on our way to our next major power-up. So the whole reason we came out to this place in the first place was to get the Super Smash, which is a ground pound ability that you heard me mention earlier. Um, it's at the top of this lighthouse area here. And in order to do it, um, we have to hit a button and race this light bulb up to the top for some reason because it's hidden within an electrical component. How this doesn't violate OSHA on several different measures is a shock to me, but don't worry about it. It's a video game. It's in 2004. This place was probably already foreclosed by now. All right, so now this is where we really start to get to see how busted uh, Scooby's hitbox is when he's doing these charge attacks. Normally, I should be colliding with these enemies or have to jump over them or something like that, but no, I can just run right by them like I don't really care. Oh, I ran into this one. Not a big deal. The angles there are a little bit tight, but not a huge deal. Bonk only costs like a second. All right, so right there it was kind of subtle, but I did something called a bonk cancel. Where normally when you slam into that light bulb, um, you take a bit of a knockback animation from the force of it. Uh, but if you jump a couple frames before that happens, you can skip that animation and it saves maybe half a second. Alright, so normally there's a warp gate that we can just skip right up to here. Um, but there's like a mother load of snacks here, so I'm gonna go a bit out of my way here. Alright, made some really clean hook cycles. I wish I had my splits running right now because... This might have been a gold split. This was at least really close. Oh, I hit the button. Never mind. Well, there's karma for you. You try to angle yourself uh, just well enough to not hit that, but I suck, so not a huge deal. All right, so now that we have the grand, uh, the, <laughs> the grand slam, the ground pound, uh, we can actually go beat the game now. Now, the game normally expects us to beat uh, another boss for each wing of the game. So the red beard fight in uh, Smuggler's Cove... And the green ghost at the end of Hedge Maze. All of these enemies in the game are based off of past Scooby-Doo encounters or episodes from the original series. And these button hitboxes are also terrible, but I'm not sure that those hitboxes were in the original series. I think that might have been a creative license from the developers here. All right, so I need to make sure I have about 800 Scooby Snacks by the time I've left this screen, just to know that I'm on the correct route here. This looks about good. So I'm actually going to forego a snack box that I normally get here. Play it safe. All right. I was on one health here, so there's a chance I die here. Now, on the keys uh, here, there are these keys suspended over the cauldrons. Now, it turns out that their hitbox is actually bigger than the bubbles that come out of them and normally damage you here. So if I manipulate Scooby's hitbox correctly, I can just avoid all damage here and remain completely safe. All right, I hit the button and the enemy at the same time, which means I'm a boss gamer. And then we're going to avoid breaking Shaggy out of jail for the OSHA violations by just jumping off that wall with a slope jump. 
Now, right here, we're going to do our next major sequence break. So, I'm trying to get a slope jump at the top of this left wall here, and it will let me skip the third boss fight. A little hard to explain how this one works. Uh, it just does. Come on, baby. You can do it. Come on. This one's a little finicky. That was a little too low. There we go. Okay, great. So now right after that, we have uh, the hardest skip in the game that skips the second boss. I'm going to be completely quiet here while I try to attempt this. Oh my gosh, I got first try. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so I was a little too slow there, and I missed the bat. Essentially, I'm doing a bunch of slope jumps up this tunnel here in order to reach a bat that I can boost off of to get out of here. That was almost first try in the marathon. My PB doesn't even have first try, so that was almost sick. So let me let me just make sure I can actually get this trick. <laughs> oh, okay. Sometimes that happens where on the final dump, you just don't get your double jump back. That's the game's fault, not mine, I promise. Okay, there we go. So that went pretty clean. Gotta jump here or else he'll hit me. All right, waiting for a bat to come in from the right. There he is. Nice. All right, we got the skip. Now, uh, there's a bit of a faster strat I can do here, but I'm going to play it safe for marathon purposes. Uh, it turns out that all of this lab equipment, normally all of this, anything with lightning on it is an instant kill. And if I die, I have to do that trick again. But it turns out that all of that laboratory equipment um, it's just a safety net and allows us to stand on top of that and skip all of this button pushing nonsense that I really don't care about. So now I'm going to grab a snack box over to the left here. And because my snack routing was really good this run, I only have to collect one back up here. So overall, we're almost done with the run here. Uh, we're going to skip the remaining portion of the Little Lab of Horrors with a trick known as Lido Skip. So over here, I'm making a... A series? Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm going to have to try again. I got a little bit of a weird angle. But there's some in uh, collision off screen here. There we go. That I can jump off of to get straight to the 850 gate and skip two levels. Yeah, the floor is lightning. Exactly. And now we're going into the last couple levels of the game. We've skipped the majority of the game's content, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But honestly, like, it's kind of cool at the same time because there's so many categories for this game that explore different aspects of movement, different tricks, different areas. This this speed game is super, super diverse and malleable, and that's really why I enjoy running it. Um, so back to the run at hand here. Uh, we, have to ba we have to bail Shaggy out here um, with a terrible grabbing hitbox. Um, so the hitbox for latching on the Shaggy here is notoriously bad. So um, I took a death there actually in my PB. I actually PB'd tonight actually. I got a 2645, and that was with a death in this room, so I do not mind dying here at all. It's not that big of a deal. So hitting a couple buttons uh, kills a shirt, which is probably going to make uh, somebody upset over at PETA. Um, but now what we're going to do is go fight the final boss. There's only one more room in the game here, uh, but we still got some more cool strats coming up here. Eric, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I died at the shark this time. It couldn't be a marathon run without it. Ready, ready. All right, so now we're going to reunite with all of our friends here. Oh, this is not good. All right, we're going to have to try to strat again. Um, so what I'm going to do is wait a tad and then double jump and slam to meet this at the earliest possible cycle and skip that whole platforming bit. And then right after that, I'm going to hold up and to the right on the D-pad and then charge, and then I insta-clip through the wall because the game has just given up all hope at this point. And as a result, that allows me to clip through the wall and skip the first phase of this boss fight. Now, this is the Scooby-Doo mastermind here. Uh, he's the one who's been conducting this mystery that we've neglected to even try to solve at all. And so I'm going to damage myself intentionally in order to be able to start up a charge, um, just so that I can hit the buttons on the earliest possible frame. One more loop through of these buttons here, and then that'll be the end of phase two. Oh, this is not pleasant. All right, there we go. So a little bit slow through here, not a huge deal. All right, now because um, I was a little slow there, I just decided to wait for the lasers to go because if I were in hit stun, I would be getting to the button a little later. 
All right, now time is coming up soon. So what I have to do here is after killing a couple of these robots, uh, Mastermind will spawn in the arena, and I have to progressively stun him and push him back into those lasers in the background. So time will end as soon as you see him take damage. All right, so he landed in a good spot, so I think I'm on pace to make an early cycle here. All right, Gertie, and time. All right. That, I, I don't know what my time is yet. Um, does anyone in chat mind telling me what my time was? I'm curious. That run was really, really good. Uh, wait, I can actually just check the stream. Potentially. All right. So, that was Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights, everybody. Um, oh, that was like a 28 flat. Hot dang. That's sick. Um, that's... Uh, for reference, my PD is a 2645, so to get within, like, less than, like, two minutes of that is really, really good. Um, I apologize for, I apologize for the short notice on the timer. Um, so we're a bit, un we're, we're a fair bit underestimate. I don't want to hold things up longer, but I would like to ask you all a question. So, the credits theme for this game is an absolute bop. Um, we have dubbed it in my stream Scoob Step. It's a it's a dubstep remix of the Scooby Doo theme. If you all want, we can wait around to the end of the credits and listen to that. It is beyond spectacular. If I gotta go, I gotta go. I totally understand. Um, but hey, I finished rather underestimate, so it'll it'll be like maybe two two three more minutes of cutscene, and then we'll get to the bop. Um, so John, feel free to cut me off. Um, but while the rest of the cutscene's going, I do have a couple of shoutouts. Um, again, thank you, John. I know everyone said this already tonight, but John has been doing this all by himself. And has been putting on one heck of a show. Made this super easy for me to get set up. So, thank you so much, John, for allowing me to have this opportunity. Um, on top of that, um, thank you, everybody, for being here. There's, like, 800 people here right now watching at, like, 12 a.m. my time. So that's, like, really, really awesome. Uh, lastly, shoutouts to the Scoob community. Um, if you played this game as a kid or this game looks interesting to you and if you want to speedrun it, if you go on the SRCOM page, that's speedrun.com slash N100F, you can find a link to a Discord and a bunch of video resources for everything speedrun for this game. The community for this game is actually rather large and has a bunch of really good resources, so helped me to learn the game really fast, so I would highly recommend it. This game is such a sick speedrun. All right, so we have about a minute of cutscene left. Uh, just feel free to cut me off whenever, but we've got about a minute left if you want to listen to some Scoob Step. So, uh, yeah, I've been Jaxler, and thank you so much for watching this run. I really appreciate it. So, yeah. <laughs> it's been a fun night. Got to do this, PB. It's been a great night. So, I'm happy. And I didn't show GGS. Let's go. <laughs> She used my patent pending, dressed for supper, suck you up. I spent so much time. Yeah, that's the SR com link right there. Me dressed and to the front door in seconds. <laughs> that way I can uh, be on time to pay the fee. Oh, uh, interesting, uh, exactly. interesting trivia fact. The groundskeeper in this game is actually voiced by Don Knotts. And, um, the mastermind, I forget who he's voiced, voiced by. I'll have to check. It was very um, uncomfortable. I'll have to check the credits again, but uh, the Mastermind boss fight, uh, he's actually voiced by uh, someone rather significant. I forget who, um, but I will point it out once we get there, um, if we have time. But thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. You guys would have caught my uncle. And when he was sent All right, here's the master plan. Tim Curry, that's it. I knew it was it Tim or Tom something. I apologize. Yeah, and I would have um, gotten away with it too, if not for you meddling whew, kids. I am <laughs> and your pesky dog. Huh? Simmer down, Jax. <laughs> Here, Professor, let me help you. Oh, thank you. Wait, is the model I also done knots? Is that actually a thing? Well, all these how, do, how do I not all? How do I not know all of this stuff? Hey! I feel like a moron for not knowing my Night of a Hundred Flight Fright Store. <laughs> All right, this is the end of the credit. This is the end of the final cutscene. So get your sour pluses ready. It's time for Scoob Step. Get ready. Get ready to be amazed.
I will also note while we're listening here, there a bunch of the developers like Eric Lord of 10K Hernandez have some really funny nicknames on the dev team. My favorite has to be uh, Razmig the Bug Killer, which to me is hilarious and kind of sad because you can beat the game in under a half an hour. Um, but I will let this. I will just let this play. I apologize if you hear rumblings in the background because I'm currently jamming out to the music as well. <laughs> there he is, there's Razmig. <laughs> Velma sampling here always sends me. <laughs> it's too good. And the zoinks on the fade out. Well, that's going to be it for me, th folks. Again, John and uh, everyone here, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm about out of time here. So up next is James Bond the Duel. Uh, enjoy the runs, everybody, and keep on donating. Thanks, folks. Later.